Hey everybody, today I am working on an embroidery hoop on my Mauser uh, chain stitch embroidery machine. So this is just a little embroidery hoop that I got off of um, Amazon. And uh, I do a little design on it. And then I stick my, my tag on the inside. These are um, white nylon tags that they definitely go through the laundry well. Um, and I got them from Carl at KG Industries up in New York there Carl has the best prices um, so I'm gonna do a quick um, embroidery hoop here and what I'm doing today is I'm doing the name William I made these embroidery hoops for a lot of my co-workers and hung them on their cubicles and then people keep changing uh, either being hired or leaving and I have to make them for the new people so I owe William a name tag um, so I'm going to put you in the phone holder and I'm going to do this uh, name tag. Hang on. Okay, so welcome back. So I have my little piece of denim here under the machine and I'm going to do the name. I wrote the name in a water soluble marker and um, I, I'm going to try my best. It's hard to take videos because the phone and the light are always kind of where I want my head to be. Um, so basically this is, uh, I had to draw it a couple times, so it's not the neatest. I'll try to stay on the right line and, um, I'm going to write the name William and what I do, this works better for me, is I go over it three times. I go forwards and then backwards and then forwards again, because when you only do it twice, your letters are crossing in the wrong order. So you always want to be writing from like left to right and you want the, um, the right row of stitches to be on top of the other row as if you're writing it by pen. So if you only do it two times, it's like you wrote it backwards. Um, so I always do it three. So I'm going to do the W first. So I'm just going to start out. And I will say that um, doing these name things gave me a lot of practice in line work. And I, I did a lot. I did a lot of coworkers' names. Um, just as a gift, I just gave them away to my coworkers. But it really helped me with my um, skill and accuracy in lettering. Try to be careful at the start and the end that I give it a quick, you know, turnaround. So this is the third pass now, technically. I'm going to stop here and start over on the I. So I raise my needle to the highest. I'm reaching under with my hand. I'm pulling out some slack. I'm lifting up my foot. I'm rolling the hand wheel forward, which lowers the needle out of the nipple. And it allows me to pull my fabric away. And then I'm going to put my finger on the threads. And I'm going to actually roll my hand wheel backwards. And it's going to break the thread. And then one of these threads was the one that did the W one is coming out from below. So if you hold on to the one from below, you can just get back over here and restart your next piece. Um, so I'm going to go here. Now I'm going to do the name. Um, So my clawfoot got stuck on the threads there a little bit. So I just have to get that off and then just keep going. Doesn't matter which way you turn on the first pass. Um, but on the, the coming back pass, you kind of want it to be clean. 
Oh, I totally spelled that wrong. I was thinking M and it's supposed to be an A. Okay, hang on. I got to pull that out. <laughs> hang on. Okay. So I just pulled out some of the thread in the, in the letter to get back to a good starting point. And now I'll try to spell it correctly, going to an A and then a W I L L I A M. Okay, yeah, all right. So I'm doing the A now. So now I'm going to go backwards and when you go backwards I kind of tend to turn in whichever way sort of suits me the best. Um, it's not always the right way, talking about you know the, the penmanship, but I will go the right way when I come back. That's just me. I mean whatever way you do it is fine and people will appreciate your gifts. Um, but I have found these little embroidery hoops to be really good practice um, writing a name and staying on a line and people love them um, I'm trying to see what letter I'm going on this is the L so you can kind of reshape your letter a little bit if you did it wrong the first time my my cloth foot is getting stuck on my thread I need to probably take it off and smooth out the back, but if I'm just a little more careful, I won't have it pick the thread. Okay, so that's two times, forwards, backwards, and now I'm going to go back around. And I still have my stitch shortened. I'm on the 12 stitches per inch. So it makes it a little easier to do tight stuff. I mean, this isn't really tight but it makes it easier. I do have trouble talking and sewing at the same time, so bear with me. Uh, oh, okay, that's an I. Okay, I almost messed that up. Um, in fact, I think I, I'm not happy with that. <laughs> I'm gonna take that out. I, I messed up, I thought that was an A, so I started turning at the top. Um, and it's not an A. So I'm going to um, pull that, that out a little bit and start over. So I'm going to pull my thread away. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to just come in here. And what's on the bottom, sorry if you can see that. I'm going to just grab my thread from the bottom. And I'm just going to pull it. And it's going to pull out that path that I just did right there. And then the last loop that's sticking up. I take my hook paper clip. It's very expensive. Um, I pull the thread out and put that in my <clears throat> easy thread needle that um, Christy shared into the group. I like those needles a lot. I'm going to just feed it through to the back. Okay. And while I'm back here, I'm going to trim off the stop and start. I usually don't have to stop and start this many times in one name. Um, okay. So doing an I. Okay. Try to remember that that's an I. Okay. All right. Back to the I. So I, and this is my last pass, so I have to make it look nice. Okay, I. The top of the A I like to go past and so that the upright part catches what I just did. done with the lettering. Okay, 
So I'm done with the lettering there. And I'm my <clears throat> nose of my machine is pointing towards me, so I'm gonna have to pull away, lower the needle a little bit, pull away. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna turn everything around because I I do better cutting from this side. And I'm gonna pull the, the thread out so I have enough to tie. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna pull this out. And now I'm gonna, sorry, my light bent down. I'm gonna do the two eyes. So um, I'm gonna hold the thread from below. I usually like to hold my thread from below so that when I start out, I have a good tension on the thread. Otherwise you can get a loose loop when you start. And then I'm just gonna do a little dot for the eye. I'm gonna go around, I guess, three times maybe. I usually just stop when the machine is pointing away from me. Okay, so there's one, and I'm gonna pull slack, pull the foot up, rotate the needle forwards, pull my stuff away, um, use my fancy, this is a paper clip, hook knife, pull the slack out. I'm gonna cut it, and I'm gonna hold on to the one from below, and I'm gonna pull the other one off the needle. I'm gonna go over here to the other eye, I'm gonna put a dot here. Let's see, put a dot there, I guess. Hmm. I might have gone around four times, but it's okay. Um, pull my stuff out. Sometimes I don't break the thread off with the nipple because I want to have a little longer piece of thread to put on my needle and feed through to the back. So sometimes I just do that and I cut it. Okay, so now my William is done. Let me just move you guys over here a little bit. Um, so let's see. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna flip it over. Where I went from one letter to another, I'm just gonna pull that thread out from the, the bottom or from the top. And then I'm gonna take my my easy thread needle that I got on Amazon. You pull the last stitch tight. I'm gonna thread my needle. I'm gonna poke it through to the back. Pull my thread through, just pull it, give it a little tug. I'm gonna go to my dot. I'm gonna pull the last stitch tight, thread my needle. I love these easy thread needles. Um, pull my thing to the back and I make it tight. Go to my eye dot. Try to put it like near the last stitch. Okay. And the last one. Okay, that's that. Now I'm gonna trim all these. I usually leave like about a, three quarters to an inch of stuff hanging off. It helps so that your thread doesn't get pulled to the front and um, start unraveling. So I just cut them all. Okay, and this isn't gonna go through the wash or anything like that, so it doesn't matter. So that is my William. Let me see here. It's not, you know, perfect. It's not like it was done on a computer, but um, hopefully it looks nice. So what I was talking about was going in the right direction is that, sorry, I just bumped them out. This part of the L comes down and crosses over and then it goes up and it gets crossed over again. So that's why I like to do the three passes because if you do it, only twice, and I can't go backwards and then forwards. I had trouble doing that, so I go forwards, backwards, forwards. Um, then it, it looks nicer, I think. <clears throat> or you could, <clears throat> excuse me, you could try maybe like three threads and just do it once, but but there you go. So I'm gonna um, take this, I'm just gonna spray it with some water, my um, pen will disappear, and then I'm gonna stick it into an embroidery hoop with my embroidery label, okay? So thanks for watching and I hope that sort of just gives like a little demo of how I do 
my small names, um, but this is not that small, you know, it's a six inch um, embroidery hoop, but hopefully um, that helps you all. And that's um, coming to you from my Mauser International Chain Stitch Machine. Okay, thanks for watching.